Hey guys, it's Tim and this is Wrestling Unlimited as it's Monday. That means tonight was Monday Night Raw. Now, as far as tonight's Raw does go, I thought there was a lot of good action, especially in that gauntlet match. Who would have expected Ricochet and JD McDonough to be that good? Like, holy crap, that match was great. Sami Zayn, Chad Gable was really good. And I thought the show flowed really well as well. I thought, you know, by the time we got to the start of the gauntlet match at like 15 minutes after the top of the third hour, I was like, man, his first two hours flew by. At least for me, they flew by. I don't know about you guys. But yeah, I excuse me, enjoyed tonight's Raw better than the last couple of weeks for sure. Oh, excuse me. Can't stop burping all of a sudden. Better than the last couple of weeks for sure. But so two things. There was, there was an announcement made today on Raw for WrestleMania, and there's an announcement coming tomorrow. So first off, we got a big announcement. We're getting a goddamn 12-man ladder match at WrestleMania. 12 man. No. Six. Did I count right? No, it's I counted. Six team. It's a six team. Yes, yeah, so it's 12. I counted right. For some reason, I confused myself in the same. Because I was about to say six team. And then I was thinking, yeah, no. Anyways, my, my brain kind of went. Burr! My dyslexia kicked in high gear there. But yeah, 12 person, six team ladder match. Holy crap. So we know. Three teams are going to come from Raw, counting the tag champs, and two teams are going to come from SmackDown. So, actually, I'm going to ask Luke two predictions here. One that has to do with this tag title situation, and then a different one here in a second. But, who do you think wins over New Day? Because we have three, the three, Um, it's actually pretty predictable. We have the three qualifying matches for next week. Let me pull this up on the screen so you can see the actual graphic. We have these three qualifying matches that will be taking place next week. So my question to you, New Day or Alpha Academy? I think it's pretty obvious that's the New Day. DIY or the Creed Brothers? I'm going to go DIY. Awesome Truth or... Do they even have a name? Indusher. Indusher. My bad. Awesome Truth or Indusher? I think it's pretty obvious that's Awesome Truth. Right, and so now the big question is, okay, so we know of these teams, but what teams are we going to get from SmackDown? I would assume, if I'm predicting, like just spitballing an idea, I would say whatever that name is for Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne, and then pretty like deadly. British Alliance, maybe? No, it's like Catch something. Catch Club. Catch Club Republic. Something like that. But I think Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne, and then maybe the other team from SmackDown would be pretty, pretty deadly. deadly. Yeah. Because so I'm going to pull up the SmackDown roster really fast so we could see, you know, who's who's on SmackDown and what teams do they have over there. Because honestly, those are the only two teams I can even think. Oh, Gallows and Anderson, but I don't think they add them to this ladder match. Yeah, they're, in it. they're doing stuff in NXT. Right. So if we pull up the SmackDown roster, we've got AOP. Don't think it's them. We've got Street Profits. Don't think it's them. We do have a shot. I was thinking the, maybe uh, go for it. I was thinking maybe Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. I wouldn't be against that. Actually, I wouldn't be against that at all. We also have Ashanti the I mean, Adonis we, and Cedric Alexander as a new team. Yeah, but I think it'd be too early to put them in. Oh yeah, in this ladder match though, you got to build them up first. You got Berto and Angel. I think they're going to do something with the LWO. But so. Out of all the teams on SmackDown, if we name all the SmackDown teams that is not already in a storyline, you would think Ashanti, maybe they do Grayson Waller. Oh, here we go. Maybe they do Grayson Waller and Austin Theory against Ashanti, the Adonis, and Cedric Alexander as a qualifying match. That wouldn't be a horrible one to do. Well, no. Does Cedric and Ashanti even had a match yet as a team? Because you wouldn't want them losing their first match. All they had was like one segment. That was it. Technically, it's been two. One got cut from an episode of SmackDown, and they put it on Twitter. The first one that was supposed to air on SmackDown never aired because of time. Yeah, I think it's maybe not pretty deadly. I think Tyler Bate and and Pete Dunne for sure, especially after last week when Tyler Bate's like, I'm going to go talk to Nick Aldis about the tag title situation. But I think them for sure. And then, yeah, the other team would probably be either 
Grayson Waller and Austin Theory are pretty deadly. I'd say New Catch Republic for sure. That's the name, New Catch Republic. Yeah, I think for they're going to be the, one of the two SmackDown teams, one hundred percent. Like I could, I could, I could say that with pretty good confidence. Now, my other question: Four. Go, go for it, go for it. Before I ask the other question, honestly, what they could do? What, what if like the the last like SmackDown or Raw before Mania, they did like a they did like a last chance qualifier? Well. No, well, because they already said three teams from Raw, so we'll know the three Raw teams next week. That's 100%. Those three teams will be from Raw, and we're only getting two from SmackDown. So I don't really see where a last chance qualifier fits. I'd say two teams from SmackDown would have to be New Catch Republic and Pretty Deadly. Unless, like you said, be. unless, like you said, they do Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, which I would not be against that over Pretty Deadly. I wouldn't be against that either, but I could also see, like, WWE just doing something with them, like they had, they did like the Grace Waller effect on WrestleMania, and they had right. someone show up, like a celebrity, well, if like Snoop Dogg just like beat him up or something. Well, that'd be funny. Well, they want something for Cena to do that's small and easy and memorable. Because I don't think Cena's working a match, but they want Cena involved in some way. Maybe they bring back Cena and Grace Waller. Maybe they do something with Cena and Austin Theory. Maybe Theory can be like, "Hey, remember last year I beat you?" Right. Now, my other question is WWE announced tonight, which I would assume this is WWE related or else they wouldn't be uh, promoting it. But they said that tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, I think it is. They said um, Logan Paul is going to have an announcement on his podcast. You think that has to do maybe with his WrestleMania match? Mm, maybe. I can see them doing doing it on a podcast, though, like yeah. just for him. Because they said Logan Paul will be making, and I got the graphic right here. It says, let me see, I'll read it exactly what it says. Whoop. Covered your face there for a second. Um, It said, oh, I don't have the graphic. But basically it said Logan Paul makes an announcement on uh, his impulsive podcast. So we'll see what that is. Living on the West Coast, it'll probably be out before I wake up or right when I'm waking up. So, yeah. Honestly, I think his match might be a triple threat him versus Randy versus KO. You think they announced it like. I feel like them announcing that on the podcast would be a little weird. Him just going, I'm going to defend against both of these guys on the podcast. I don't know. It just feels like it would be a weird way to announce that. So, I don't know. We'll know in the morning, though. Uh, unless maybe it's just him saying on his podcast that we partner with WWE for Prime. Yeah, that would be weird because they already announced that. So why pl why plug another Prime announcement? Yeah, but I'm sure a lot of his fans though might not watch WWE though. So maybe he he just announced it on the podcast for people that don't watch WWE. I mean, I get that, but it, he was posting it on his social media since Friday. Or. Or it could have something to do with maybe like Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. Maybe they do some sort of split promotion where WWE, oh, I don't know, maybe like, hmm, maybe they get WWE involved with, well, no, I wouldn't want that. I would say maybe it does have to do with that, and it could be like something where it's like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like WWE is going to help promote it or something, or they're going to do a segment, or or maybe they announce on SmackDown, or they announce that this week on SmackDown they're going to do something to promote it. I don't know. It'd be an interesting one. I mean, last week would have been. I mean, the, there's a lot of last week would have been stuff they could really do right with this, segment, with this announcement. So if they but were we'll to see. if they were to help out promoting the Logan uh, Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight, last week would have been the night to do it. Because the fight's in Dallas, and last week they were in Dallas. But we'll see. They didn't really. I don't think they announced it till late, though. Well, didn't they announce it? Well, I I saw it before. So when did they announce it? Thursday or Friday? It was like last Thursday or Friday. Yeah, because uh, I remember I, I it was already it already had been announced for like two hours by the time I woke up the day it got announced. So we'll have to wait and see till the morning. Less than how about. From 12, 13 hours from now. Well, about 12 hours from now. 
12, 11, 12 hours from now. But with that, I want to say thank you for joining us here. Twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. YouTube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited. And podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. Remember, if you are watching live on Twitch, you can help us out a couple of different ways. You can either help us out by hitting that donate button down below or by donating Twitch bits in the live chat. Also, remember, you can help us out by subscribing to the channel one of two different ways. You can either subscribe with a tiered subscription or you can subscribe with Amazon Prime. Because remember, if you have Amazon Prime, then you have Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming gives you a lot of cool things like free games, free stuff for games, and you always get one free subscription to any Twitch channel you want to subscribe to throughout the month. And I'd greatly appreciate it if you did right here for Wrestling Unlimited. Also, remember to head over to YouTube. Do a couple things for us over there as well. Hit that subscribe button. That way you know when we post new videos. That way you know when we post uh, when we go live and when we post things to the community tab. Also, remember if you want to support the channel, you can do so by hitting that join button and becoming a channel member. Finally, remember if you want to get your comment, question, or concern read live on the air, you can do so by donating a super chat in the live chat. And finally, head over to the Epic Game Store. Head over to the Epic Game Store and buy something. Whether you're buying a new game like Expeditions of Mud Runner, maybe you're getting an older game like Ghost of Tsushima, I mean the free game Astro's Duel 2, or you're getting V Bucks, you're getting that battle pass for the new Myths and Mortal Season of Fortnite. You're going to want to use this code right here PW Unlimited at checkout, and you will be supporting us at no extra cost. Remember, that's code P-W-U-N-L-I-M-I-T-E-D for all Epic Games and Epic Game Store purchases. But with that, we got Monday Night Raw to talk about. show itself did come to us from Houston, Texas, inside the Toyota Center. I actually been there once. I saw the Trans-Siberian Orchestra there in December of 2010. It was like a month before my daughter was born. My buddy won tickets for through his work, his work, um, did like a raffle to get four tickets away. So I went with them and yeah, really cool. Great building. Great building. Where is that again? Houston, Texas, the Toyota center. I have not been. Yeah. I've been there once for a concert. Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Trans-Siberian Orchestra is badass. Like that concert was amazing. So show opens up. And they tell us, hey, rapper Travis Scott is here. And he's wearing an old school Steve Austin DTA shirt. He was um, embraced by Jey Uso. They also show us that Gunther has arrived at the building as well. Show then opens up with Drew McIntyre. Drew comes out and he calls Seth Rollins selfish, delusional, and a hypocritical junkie for giving himself two WrestleMania main events. Drew, were getting, were, Drew was getting what chance? And he kind of played into him a little bit and mocked CM Punk at one point as well. The crowd then started chanting for CM Punk, and McIntyre said he was the only one keeping Punk relevant right now. McIntyre spoke briefly about The Rock before he was interrupted by Seth Rollins. Rollins dared McIntyre to attack him tonight, hit him with a claymore. Rollins got on his knees and said, I'll even let you hit me from behind. McIntyre didn't bite. Rollins then called him a coward. And so he turned his... Um, and so he said, I, I, I know exactly what you're going to do. And well, he did nothing. McIntyre was like, oh, do you want me to attack you now? No, that's not how this is going to work. McIntyre says he wants Rollins to listen to him and what he has to say. McIntyre said that Rollins was right when he said that he would never get over, that he had to get over the bloodline. He said that he wanted to drop Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa when they got involved in his business. But now... He knows that I don't have to worry about them. And maybe you should take that same advice. Don't worry about the bloodline. McIntyre would again call Seth Rollins a junkie for attention. And, like, and he says that you like getting involved in other people's business. Rollins said, McIntyre, we're starting to remind him of CM Punk. Rollins thought Punk was the biggest hypocrite in the world until, well, he met Drew McIntyre. Rollins said that McIntyre might as well have been an honorary member of the bloodline at this point. Rollins thought that McIntyre would gladly take their help if it meant beating him and standing tall with The Rock. He's like, you could be the people's chosen one. Rollins said that that would, uh, wouldn't happen 
because he and Cody Rhodes would take down the bloodline on night one of WrestleMania. On night two, Rollins would beat McIntyre once again, and the only thing he would hear were the people singing his song. Now, before I keep going, who do you think wins night one? The bloodline or Seth and Cody? It would have to be Seth and Cody. I don't it think it would so. have to be. No! I say it's the bloodline, and so Cody has to win with all the odds stacked against him in the main event. You know what could also happen? What if The Rock turns on Roman and later sets up Rock versus Roman down the line? Oh, that's exactly what's going to happen. I think Rock and Roman win night one. And then that means Rock can get involved in night two. Screw Roman. And there you go. Because they say, say The Rock attacks Roman. Well, then Roman just won via disqualification. So if Rock and Roman win night one, bloodline rules, no rules, then there you go. Rock can do whatever he wants. And even if that's attacking Roman. So I think it's exactly no, like, what they're doing. No, but like what I was thinking though, like what if they do a spot where like Roman's about to reach for the tag or no, like Roman's about to tag rock. Rock just gets out of the way and says, says no. And then like Cody, Cody pins Roman and at the end of the match. Rock just says, good luck tomorrow. Eh, I wouldn't hate it, but that's not mm. what I would rather see is Cody have to fight from below, as they would say. Cody's got to fight all the odds. He's got to fight off Jimmy. He's got to fight off Solo. He thinks he's going to have to fight off The Rock, and then we get WrestleMania 27 all over again, and, well, the champ gets... Well, not the champ. That wasn't the champ that time. But the big-named star gets uh, rock bottom. Because remember, WrestleMania 27... It was the Miz versus John Cena. Rock came out, rock bottom to the John to John Cena, and then that's how Miz ended up winning. Even though Miz was completely out of it and didn't know what was going on, Miz admits it too. He was concussed for half of that WrestleMania main event and was just going through the motions. That was a weird WrestleMania, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, because <laughs> like. <clears throat> It was like Big Show, Kane, Kofi, and Santino versus the core. It was uh, Cody versus Ray. I mean, we got an awesome RKO out of that. Right. Out of that WrestleMania when that Randy and versus Punk. So like, and that was also Edge's last match before he retired because he was facing Alberto Del Rio. Michael Cole had a match. Michael Cole beat Jerry Lawler. I think Kali won a battle royal. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah. There was a battle royal, and I think Kali won. And then Sheamus beat Daniel Bryan. Or like, no. I don't remember no, 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 that no. either. No, no, no. Sheamus. So the U.S. title was on the line in a lumberjack match, if I'm remembering correctly. And the match ended in a no contest. That's what it was, I that think. Was versus, that Bryan. was Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan? Yeah. If I'm remembering correctly, show match? I think so. <clears throat> it have been their second pre-show match on a WrestleMania. And then we also had Triple H and uh, Undertaker on that show. Snooki wrestled that show yeah, too. Re- that was the Snooki Ooh. WrestleMania. Jersey Shore shook Snooki. Was that Snooki and like John Morrison versus Lay Cool? Yeah, it was Snooki, Morrison, and no, yeah, it was Snooki, Morrison, and Trish, I want to say, against Lay Cool and Dolph. Yeah. Jeez, uh, that was a weird mania. Yeah, 2011? 11. Yeah, 2011. Uh, so, back to the segment, Rollins said that... Uh, Rollins said... Let me, let me, oh, oh, here we go. Uh, as far as McIntyre saying to the Rock, he said that's not going to happen because he and Cody are going to win. McIntyre then figured Rollins wanted him to put him out of his misery. So that way when he beats him at WrestleMania, he's got an excuse. And I'm like, so I hear, so they say that there. And then Rhea says the same thing to Becky later, which is kind of weird. But Rollins said that McIntyre was upset because out of everything going on right now, he is not Seth's priority. The bloodline is, and that upsets Drew. That he is looking 
pass to Drew. McIntyre then gets upset and says, like, oh, you want to come hit me now? Come get me, come get me, come get me. And then Drew finally walks off. So, again, they're doing an, a good job of me wanting to see Drew versus Seth. But again, even with them building this matchup in a good way on Raw and, you know, the titles on the and everything, it almost doesn't feel important, though, because... Just like Drew McIntyre is saying, they're focusing too much on Seth being involved with the Bloodline stuff. And so this match is almost taking a backseat to not being as important, in my opinion. Maybe others think differently, but what do you think of all of this going on with Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre and the build to their WrestleMania Night 2 match? Uh, I don't know. I, I honestly don't really know. I'm being completely honest. Like, I feel like there's not really much to this, like, build because they're just focusing so much on Seth and Cody versus Roman and The Rock. Right. I mean, completely honest. I mean, do you feel the same way? No, 100% the same way. Like, they were even showing, like, a bunch of promos from, like, last Friday about... The Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I just felt like that just overshadowed everything. Yeah, no, I agree. Give me one second. Kivish is saying Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan took place at WrestleMania 28 for the world title. I wasn't talking about the world title match, though. I was talking about for the U.S. title. Maybe I'm thinking wrong, but I thought that they had a lumberjack match for the U.S. title. That. Give me, hold on. I'm going to load up WrestleMania 27 really fast here on the Peacock. Uh, do they show pre-show stuff on Peacock? They should. Let's go to WrestleMania 27 and see. I know um, that wasn't on the like the actual like card, though. It had, to, it had to be a pre-show. I'll tell you right now. Maybe they don't. Nope, they don't show the pre-show on here. Nope, this doesn't show the pre-show. I can get it, though. WrestleMania 27 pre-show. Found it. Daily motion for the win. Bingo, watching it right here. Sort of show it. I can't play it, but I can like scrub through it. So, bu -bu 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 bum. We go here. WrestleMania 27. That's the WrestleMania 27 stage. Jameis coming out. Lumberjacks all around the ring. Where's Brian? Daniel Bryan. U.S. title. I just saw the graphic for it. Boom, U.S. title. Brian and Sheamus for the U.S. title and Lumberjack match. Apparently the match, if I remember correctly, the match ended in a no contest. There's Theodore Long. Yeah, everyone just started brawling on the outside and the match ended in a no contest. So Kind of a letdown. Right? I mean, it was a pre-show, but still. But yeah, then the next year, they did fight again. For um, the world championship. Yeah, that match lasted like 18 seconds, not even. Right? Yeah, that match that was... That still kind of feels weird to me, though. Sheamus, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus defeated Daniel Bryan in 18 seconds. Yeah, like, that, that was still so weird. Like you said, like, they, I, I never understood like, that. Then the next Friday, the, the, the whole angle where Daniel Bryan broke up with AJ because of that. Yeah. I'm like, still, that makes no sense. <laughs> uh, this shows damage control. Like, oh, go for it. Never mind. <laughs> Going back to Raw, they showed damage control entering the building. Also, uh, if you guys are going to put fake information in the chat, I'm just going to time you out and eventually ban you. Chad Gable did not win the gauntlet match tonight. That was Sami Zayn, you dum-dums. 
Uh, WWE congratulated themselves on reaching 100 million subscribers on YouTube. Only the 10th YouTube channel to ever do that. Then there was a very good Chad Gable video package that we saw over the weekend on social media. We then got our first match of the night that went 15 and a half minutes. It was Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan. This match felt long. And I thought it, they worked well together, but it wasn't like the best of matches. And it's just like, oh, another commercial. Oh, another commercial. Like, nothing... Uh, nothing against Liv and Becky. They worked well together, I thought. But the match itself never really pulled me in. I never fully got, like... I never really... That's, that's the better... I never cared. Like, what was I... Why was I supposed to care about this match? I Literally, I never cared. The entire time, I'm sitting there going... When's Nia coming out? Is Nia going to interfere? Where's Nia? Je That's all I was thinking the entire match. And then Nia attacks in a backstage segment later. But yeah, this match did honestly nothing for me. So Lynch ended before a break. And then uh, um, less than two minutes. Uh, they go to, oh no. So yeah, Lynch enters. Liv enters. Two minutes later, they go to the break. Come back and Morgan hit a, or no, before the break, Morgan hits a not good looking dive. And we come back, we see Lynch and her fighting. Lynch goes for the exploder a couple of times, but then she comes off the middle rope and Morgan nailed her with a code breaker. They exchange strikes before another code breaker where Liv gets a two. Battle on the apron for a little while, which led to Morgan hitting a sunset flip power bomb on the outside. Becky's head bounced off of the mat. Morgan rolled Lynch into the ring. But only got a two count. And from here, Becky kind of, and I'm not trying to, you know, say she got a concussion or anything. But from here on out, Becky kind of looked a little out of it. And then when you see her after the match, like, was it just me? Or did Becky look like somebody that's like, she was exhausted and not feeling right? Like, I don't know, the look on her face that she had from this point on, and especially after the match when she was doing this promo segment with... Rhea Ripley, she kind of seemed a little out of it, but I don't know, maybe because she bonked her head. Like, her head bounced off the mat when she took that powerball on the outside, but um, Lynch connected with an Oblivion in the ring, or countered an Oblivion in the ring with a manhandle slam before Morgan rolled her out of the ring before she can go for the break, go for the cover ahead of a break. Lynch then applied an arm bar, but Morgan countered into a tornado DDT. Morgan then hit the Oblivion, but Lynch this time rolls out of the ring. Morgan tried something off the top rope, but Lynch caught her, manhandle slam, and pinned her to pick up the victory. Rhea Ripley then comes out and basically is like, oh, why do you keep taking all these matches before WrestleMania? You want an excuse on why you're not 100% when you face me and I beat you? That's what you're going to say. You weren't 100%, but I want you at 100% come WrestleMania. And then Becky was just like, oh, you don't think I could do it? Whenever someone thinks I could do something, I'm good. But when people doubt me, I'm even better. I'm great. And then she leaves the ring. I didn't really care for much of this at all. What would you think? Nah, I didn't care for it either. But like, am I wrong in thinking Becky just felt like she, she seemed like she was out of it for a good portion of this? And especially like after the match, she looked like she was like just overly exhausted. I'd say probably once she hit her head, she probably just, she's kind of concussed. I mean, I don't want to make any assumptions without knowing. Like, I don't want to ever say, oh, that person's got a concussion. But it's like, she seemed a little out of it. So, we'll see. We'll see. Hot Colvin says we have a historic announcement, groundbreaking for WrestleMania from both general managers, Adam Pierce and Nick Aldis, and what they announce the tag title six-pack ladder match for WrestleMania. Teams from both Raw and SmackDown will be qualifying over the next coming weeks to face off against Judgment Day at WrestleMania. And yeah, though we already talked about this, but this match is going to be nuts. I was thinking about, like, how are we going to keep up with this match? How are they going to keep the cameras on everybody? And there's going to be spots missed for sure. Unless this match is, like, super, super choreographed out to where they know what's coming next at all times and everything is going to be like, move, set up for the next spot, move, set up for the next spot, move so they don't miss stuff. Like This is going to be a crazy match. If you thought the ladder matches at like WrestleMania 31, WrestleMania 32, 
for crazy ladder matches. I think this one's even gonna, is going to be even just 12 people. That's all I got to say. God dang, 12 people in a ladder match. Have we ever seen a 12-person ladder match before? Have you? I haven't. That I can remember. Uh, minus minus the uh, headquarters money in the bank during COVID. Like that's I, a that's a special a specialty thing all on, on its own. Can't say that I have. Yeah. I mean, it it will be fun though. I can't oh, yeah. remember last time we saw a ladder match at Mania. Mm, Thirty two probably when Zack Ryder won the IC title. Yeah. So. We're due for a ladder match at Mania. Yep. I think this is a this will be a fun one. Oh, hundred percent. I think, I think this can be a, like a good match to like keep Finn and Damian Priest strong. Do you think r truths the one pulling them titles down at the end of the night? Possibly. Good chance. I still am sitting f pretty firm on r truth and Miz leave WrestleMania as I mean, tag team champions. I mean, I don't know who else would, would win it. DIY? Mm, New Day? Maybe? Nah. New Day, they don't need it. No. Truth is so over right now. He's winning them titles. He's winning them titles. I wonder if him and Miz will do like their old awesome truth entrance. I don't even remember. They had a special entrance? Miz would go like, remix, and oh. Truth would do like a heel rap. Okay. They rap and hills. They both say like, "You suck." Gotcha. I remember now. But, but I don't think they do like. Maybe they say like, "You suck" to all the other competitors except for uh, Johnny and Champa. Yeah. Um. So this is kind of weird. They showed The Rock, Bad Bunny, and John Cena at the Oscars last night, and they said, sometimes WWE superstar Bad Bunny, sometimes WWE superstar The Rock. I'm like, well, that's kind of a weird way to say it, but okay. I wonder when the next time we'll see Bad Bunny on, like, like wrestling again. If they do LWO versus Legato at WrestleMania, I could see him being there for the LWO. he would probably just be there for commentary, though. Or just sit in front row and have like one spot where like Santos walks up to him and he slaps Santos or something. Maybe, but I can definitely see Bad Bunny just being a mania though for like yeah, whether he does like commentary or he sits front row. So this show, speaking of front row, oh my god, they show Travis Scott in the front row and no one smarting this guy up. You can't cuss on TV. This guy is being shown on the screen. He then jumps on his chair, starts slapping hands with the McBee boys, and they have to mute him because he starts cussing up a storm. Also, then McBee... I don't remember that. Yeah. It was right after they showed the Oscar stuff. He literally jumped up on his chair, and one of the three, the McBee, the McBee brothers from that new McBee Dynasty show on USA Network after all, which I caught the first 10 minutes while I was setting up the stream, and oh my God, is this show fucking stupid? Another one of these dumb family reality shows on USA that's not going to last a season. Just, USA has done so many of these shows, and the only one that ever lasted were the Chrisleys until they got themselves put in jail. Other than that, they've had so many of these, we're going to follow a family in their life reality shows, and they never last. You know why? Because they fucking put them at 11 o'clock at night on the USA Network on Mondays after Raw. As soon as Raw's over, people are like, I gotta go to bed. They had one with NASCAR driver Austin Dillon that only went one season. They did an actual NASCAR reality show on USA Network in the same time slot that only lasted one season. They had, there was a football player once that got one that lasted a season. There's another one about some just hick family from North Carolina that got one one season. Now they got a, a, a ranch farming family from Texas that... They're only famous because one of the brothers was on Joe Millionaire, and that's how he met his wife or girlfriend, fiance, whatever. But yeah, it's called the, the McBee Dynasty. They're trying to make their own version of fucking Duck Dynasty. Anyways. Duck Dynasty was actually very popular back in the oh, day. Duck Dynasty was one of the most popular things in the world in 2013, 2012. You couldn't go anywhere without seeing something Duck Dynasty somewhere in 2012 and 2013. That was nuts. 
Yeah, now they have a they stopped that. I don't know why they stopped it, but they have a new show now. It's called Butt Commander, where they um go hunting. You can watch it on, I think, Amazon. Yeah, it's not it's not all of the family, but it's like some of them. And then they have country stars, um, Jason Aldean and Luke Bryan on the show as well. Yeah, I haven't seen anything Duck Dynasty in forever. Yeah, no, that show died off. And then so the show died off. Then the uncle and two of the brothers. Got a show on, um, oh, what's that? Fox Nation. They got a show on there where they were just doing random things on their property. It was weird. I watched like one episode. And now they have a new one that's on like Amazon or something called Buck Commander. Because they also, they don't just have Duck Commander. They also have a um, deer hunting company as well called Buck Commander. So they've turned that now kind of into a show as well about them going hunting. But yeah, Travis Scott did not was not told don't cuss, and they had to mute him like four or five times because he was just. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Then speaking of people going off script, well not going off script, but not being very family friendly, Candace freaking Larray telling that Maxine Dude. Dupree's dead brother would be ashamed of her. Dude, WWE has their new like Christian Cage. Like, holy freaking A. You know, oh, God, I'm, I'll send this to you later, but I saw this on Facebook about Christian Cage. I'm not going to I'm not going to show it on stream, but I'll send it to you. OK. So we can. Yeah, the- but, but yeah, like this, this, this whole like kind of stuff reminded me a lot like, oh, WWE, this is basically going to be their Christian Cage. Thing. Yeah, I don't know where this is going. But it's like, oh, you want to turn Candice LeRae heel? Well, yeah, you've turned her heel by playing off of the Maxine stuff. You're like, oh, you wonder why people boo you? Like, oh, my God. So they're fighting. It's Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell versus Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree. The match itself only goes two minutes. Dupree was trying to do her version of the Caterpillar where she, like, walks into the corner, shimmies her shoulders, goes to do the Caterpillar, but then she does it backwards. And Candice literally just stands there and she's like, she jumps up. It, it was not, it was poorly executed, I would say. Because Maxine didn't even try to pretend to do the caterpillar at the end, like the actual drop the elbow or however she was going to do it. She literally just was doing the, the worm thing and then stands up and there's Candace. And Candace is like, Excuse me, what are you doing? Like, you look stupid. You look dumb. Don't do that. And then she like backs Maxine into the corner. And Maxine's like, you wonder why these people are booing you? Because you're doing stupid stuff like that. You wonder why they don't like you. She's like, your dead brother would be embarrassed by you right now. And if they didn't want to make Maxine look even more weak, Indy beats her by kicking her in the shoulder. Literally. Maxine goes to walk out of the ring. Indy just pops up out of nowhere, kicks her in the shoulder. Maxine falls down and Candace goes, pin her! And he's like, yes, mother. One, two, three. And like Indy gets up and Candace is like bumps Indy out of the way and leaves. And she's like, yeah, people don't like you because you're dumb. You're stupid. And it's like, what the shit is this? I kind of like this version of Candace LeRae. Just total total bitch. Well, they made Indy like so confused. Like, like Candace, why'd you do that? Well, yeah. stuff. well, because even last week, if you remember in the segment that they did when Candace was talking down to Maxine going, I don't even know why you even try. Like, what are you even trying to be here or whatever? She said something like that. And Indy's like, I'm, I'm sorry for that. I don't know what got into her. I'm uh, apologize. I'm going to go talk to her right now. So, yeah, they're doing a thing where Candace LeRae thinks that basically, if I'm interpreting this correctly, Candace LeRae thinks that Maxine is a disgrace to the business. And is making a mockery of things. As a, what is she, a 20-year vet? She's been around forever. I feel like they're trying to, like, turn, like, Maxine, like, game booed by fans at live events to, like, an actual, like, story on television. Well, yeah, they want to use that as now sympathy for Maxine. Exactly what they want to do with it. Because, like, I think WWE is probably just confused why fans booed her in the first place. They're trying to use that as sympathy. Yeah, Candice has been wrestling for 22 years. She debuted in 2002. 
Jesus. Yeah. When the heck did Johnny debut then? That's a good question. Johnny Gargano debuted in pro and wrestling. Candace isn't even, like, like Candace isn't even like that old. Johnny debuted in 2005. And Candace is only like, 38. That's not that old. No. But she started wrestling young. Yeah. So I think she started. No, she started wrestling young because I think her like older brothers or something were like huge wrestling fans. So she was always surrounded by it. Oh, yeah. See, I don't know. I know she has a degree in like culinary. I've read that before. She has a degree in culinary. Wait, call it, that's a chef. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because she used to be, before she was a full time wrestler, she was a baker at Universal Studios in LA. Jeez. Yeah. But, um, her and Gargano need to do some, some baking streams then <laughs> on Twitch. So she used to do for WWE, she used to do baking videos and it was, she would be like teaching, um, oh, her name's on Tegan Knox, how to cook. Basically, Tegan couldn't cook, so she would teach Tegan how to cook different things, like different dishes. I, oh yeah, I remember that they they did that in the NXT, I believe. Yep. They do like those skits where they're teaching Tegan how to cook, and then Johnny would just walk in like randomly and grab pudding cups. Yep, exactly. It I, was. I remember Johnny talking about that. They were they were done like three years ago on the WWE YouTube channel. There is Candice LeRae teaches Tegan Knox how to bake. Candice LeRae and Tegan Knox make buffalo chicken. And Johnny's just randomly like walk in and just grab a pudding cup. Yep. Uh, Candice LeRae teaches Tegan Knox how to bake praline cookies. Candice LeRae and T uh, teaches Tegan Knox how to make strawberry mousse. Yeah, it didn't last long at all. Like they only did a couple episodes of it. But I thought it was cool. Something different. Yeah, she's a trained, she's a trained I chef. Should, I feel like we should get more of that, though. <laughs> Not anymore. Not that she's a total bitch. She don't care about cooking for people or teaching people. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, like, those kinds of shows on WWE <laughs> Network, though. I mean. Yeah, I know. Come on. Actually, it would like, be cool. Like, Actually, what would be really good is her doing those with uh, Indy. <clears throat> I'm sure Indy knows how to cook. Trust me, I've met so many people that I thought, oh, I'll say right now, I know a couple people that they can barely boil water. Like, I know people that if they didn't have a microwave, they'd never eat. <laughs> hey, sometimes I'll make steak for myself in my apartment, so. Which, I mean, it's pretty easy. Right. Yeah, no, I but, know people. I mean, I, I need to know how to use an actual grill, though. I, I don't know how to use those. Well, do you have one? Charcoal or... Yeah, well, first question, do you have one? Uh, there's one at my apartment complex, is yes. It, is it charcoal or propane? Uh, I want to say propane. That's the easier one. If you're just learning how to use, like, to grill, propane's easier. Because, trust me, learning how to light coals and keep the coals going, that's a, that's a talent in itself to learn. Uh, Kid Vicious, unfortunately, yes, I do live alone. So, moving forward, Balor Priest and McDonough barged into Adam Pierce's office. He was there with Nick Aldis. Balor was pissed off about having to uh, defend the title against five teams in a ladder match. Pierce said that they could cement their legacy by winning this ladder match. And then Damian Priest is like, we've already proven we're the best. Why do we need to do it again? He's like, you know what? Give me... Give us our truth in the Miz tonight. And Priest goes, well, I can't do that. Truth and Miz aren't here. They're out doing media. And all of a sudden, Truth walks up, and Priest go, or Pierce goes, Truth, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be out doing media. He goes, yeah, that's on Monday. He goes, Truth, tonight is Monday. And he goes, oh, my bad. So, like, I get the joke. But it was not well executed because if Truth didn't know it was Monday, then why'd he show up to Raw? You know what I mean? Maybe he thinks it's like a pay-per-view or something. I don't know. 
maybe he, he might think maybe, maybe it's a pay-per-view or maybe it's Friday Night Smackdown. Priest then told him, put the match together, me and R-Truth. It went eight minutes later, too. Uh, so then we had Cody's sit-down interview with Michael Cole. I kind of liked this. It was different. So Michael Cole showed a video package of the closing segment for SmackDown, including Cody slapping The Rock. Rose said that he wasn't sure if The Rock actually was his boss, but either way, it sure does feel good to slap your boss. And I'm like, oh, they want Cody to be the new Steve Austin. Rose said that The Rock was one of his favorite wrestlers in the past, and Rock knew exactly what that slap was. It's what we call in the business a receipt. Cole asked why uh, Rhodes would risk so much before the match against Roman Reigns. Why put yourself in a, in a tag team match where you could possibly get hurt? Something can happen in the match on night two doesn't happen. Why would you do this? Cole said that Rollins would be... Uh, he also said, why would you team with, with Rollins? And um, Cody was like, you know, we haven't seen Nine Die in the past, but I can now trust him. Rhodes said, the people change. He goes, look at me. I smashed the throne and then returned back here to a guy who was one of my best, like, what did he call Triple H? He said, like, my best confidants in the business or something like that. He, he had some, some good to say about Triple H. Anyways, he then said, look, look at you. You used to sit over there in a glass, glass box in a wrestling singlet and talk down about everybody. He then said that teaming up with Rollins is the only way he's going to have a fair shot against Ro uh, Reigns. Rose recalled Cole asking him before if his story ended with him coming up short. Rhodes asked Cole if he looked nervous or frightened. Rhodes admitted that he was nervous and afraid. And I'm like, who's conducting this interview? Is Cody interviewing himself? He said the story was no longer about Reigns and himself. The story was about everyone who followed him through this, this year. He said the story about a fan named Hannah who was blind but went to the show and cheered him just so she could feel the emotion. It was about his friend Harley who went through final surgery but sat in the front row so he could get the weight belt. It was about the fans. Fans and his family. Like his sister, the one The Rock didn't mention last week, who was the original shotgun writer for Dusty. Fans start chanting Dusty. He then gets emotional. He says, this story is for my mother. He's like, I can't hand that belt to, Co uh, to Dusty, but I can sure hand it to her because she's the only one I have left. He's like, I could give this title to Michelle Rubio. And I'm like, oh boy. And Cody starts hot holding back them tears. He said, the story is about his number one fan. Somebody Michael Cole knows very well because Michael Cole hired her back in the day. His wife, Brandy Rhodes. She took a chance on him when he wore a goofy mask and took RKO's every night. Anyone deserves this, it was her. The story was more than just Cody. It was about everybody that's been supportive to him. Rose said that we were in the last inning. Roman Reigns last year may have said coming out of WrestleMania, this is only the third inning, but we're not in the third inning anymore. Rhodes told Cole that for the first time, he was able to say, he will be able to say that a Rhodes is the undisputed WWE champion with Cody Finishing the story. Cody then gives Michael Cole a hug before they and leave the ring. This was amazing, awesome, terrific. Cody is outstanding. What'd you think? Oh yeah, I thought this I thought this was pretty darn good. I really did. Yeah. Like it added a lot of emotion to it, which I did like. Yes. Because Cody's basically like, I'm doing this for everybody. That has ever supported me. And it, it got emotional. Which. You see wrestlers sometimes try to get emotional. You can tell they're just. They're you know trying. But when Cody almost started crying there. Mentioning his mom. You could tell that was real. Real emotion. Not just. All right I got to get emotional in this part. No. Like that was. He was holding it back because he didn't want to cry. So the difference this year with Cody, like challenging Roman, like this year they're they're going they're basically going all in with like Cody trying to beat Roman with like because they're adding more like emotion to it. 
compared to last year where they didn't really like try as hard with it if i'm being if that makes sense yeah i get what you're saying because like last year you know everyone was like oh yeah cody's winning but like the whole like storyline of him versus roman they didn't really like try as hard of like making it seem like cody was gonna win true i can see where you're coming from with that so i feel like this year like it's got to be cody winning if cody doesn't win oh yeah he's screwed up oh no i'm i'm i would bet money cody wins i would too so we then get a video package ricochet and jd mcdonough hyping up their inclusion in the gauntlet match later on in the night in the back becky lynch and Liv morgan kind of come together i think Liv walks up on becky or whatever and they shake hands before they're attacked by Nia Jax, and Nia puts Becky through a table. So, yeah. This is ball building to later on, Becky challenges Nia to a last woman standing match for next week. As we move forward, uh, the Kabuki Warriors defended the Women's Tag Team Championships against the team of Shayna Baszler and uh, Zoe Stark. And I'm like, okay, 10 and a half minute match. It was all right. It wasn't great. It was okay. I was going to set up Stark early on for an insane, an insane elbow, but she slipped out and super kicked Asuka. Stark then gave Sane a Z360, but Baszler hit a running knee strike, uh, and Baszler hit a running knee strike, but Asuka broke up the cover. Asuka then took out Stark, while Baszler put Sane in the careful clutch. Dakota Kai then grabbed Baszler's leg from the outside of the ring, and Baszler let go for some reason. It's very weird. The distraction then allowed Zane, Sane to hit Baszler with a back fist. Asuka followed this up with a kick to the head, and Sane finished her off with the elbow to pick up the victory. So, yeah, still Women's Tag Team Champions, the Kabuki Warriors. What did you think of this match? I could have sworn that there might have been a slight chance that Shane and Zoe could have won. I thought maybe, but... Because I could swear, because like in my head, like going into the match, I was like, "Oh, Bailey might screw over the Kabuki Warriors." Mm -hmm. But like they didn't surprise Bailey was even on the show. I was too weird. Yeah, I was too. Like they got, they don't really got Bailey doing anything on Raw if damage control is there. True. So I wonder what they do. I wonder what they'll do with the tag belts at Mania. Oh, the women's tag belts? Probably a pre-show match. Yeah. I could see it as a... I could, I could see it as a pre-show match. Kabuki Warriors versus, uh, like, Caden and Quintana and... Out of Fire and Isla Dawn. And then give me one NXT team and you do a four-way. An NXT team, a Raw team, and a SmackDown team. All challenging. What's the NXT team? NXT team, Kiana James and... And uh, whoever her... Tag partner is. Let's look at the NXT roster. Let's see. NXT. Um. Trying to see. So we can do Fallon Henley and Sol Roca because Sol Roca's back. Sol Ruka. Roca. Ruka. You have Jakar Jackson and Lash Legend. I don't know if Jakar. Is Jakar Jackson cleared? I know she was out injured. No. Uh, JC Jane and Thea Hale. Actually, that'd be the team I would go with. But isn't it? It's Keanu James and what? Carmen Petrovic. They're the ones that are kind of paired together. Kind um, of. Trying to see what other teams they have. I think that's about it. Yeah, that's basically it. But yeah, JC Jane and Thea Hale would be my call. Jeez, Wendy Chu, I haven't, I haven't seen her in forever. Right? Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on with her. So, we were playing 2K over the weekend, me and the kids, and they, the kids were doing, they did two Royal Rumbles. They did a men's Royal Rumble, and they did a women's Royal Rumble. And Wendy Chu comes in, and my daughter goes, why is she in her pajamas? Oh, uh, that was funny. What? What was her gimmick before that? Wasn't she like paired with like Zia Lee and Boa? Well, yeah, wasn't she? Something in NXT? Wasn't she the 
face painted up little wasn't she the one in the, all the face paint with like the the mystical powers or whatever i forget yeah, her like name she was basically like the she was basically like the face paint mythical power and she was the one like i think they were about to create a faction it was supposed to be like her mei ying Xia Li and and uh, boa yeah she was mei ying that's what she was yeah they were supposed they were supposed to do something with that then i guess vince nixed it i'm glad vince nixed it because it wasn't ever any good yeah they were in a group together called tian sha basically she was recovering from two different uh, i think knee surgeries and couldn't work but they liked her so much that they wanted to give her something to do that she didn't have to be physical Basically, what it was. Oh, so that's why they gave her like the Wendy Chu gimmick. Well, no, that's why she had the the Mei Ying gimmick, where she just sat in that throne and told Xia and Bo what to do, and oh. used her used her magical powers, so that way she could still be involved in the shows, but didn't have to wrestle or do anything physical. Oh yeah, apparent. I know it's kind of random, but apparently tonight AJ Francis, aka Top Dollar, was backstage. I saw that. I don't know why. Meh. Isn't he from Houston? I don't know. I think he's from Houston. Um, or lives in Houston? No, he's from Washington D.C. Actually, I don't know. Then. I mean, I've only yeah, ever heard you. Go for it. Yeah, I mean, apparently he was backstage tonight. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know either. Like, I always hear he's a good guy, but, like, if they bring him back, why? Like, I don't see any reason to bring him back. Like, I never I heard mean, anything bad about him. Like, I'm not saying he'll do harm, be a bad wrestler. Like, eh, whatever. He's been doing stuff with TNA I recently. Mean, I mean, beef has with... Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, and they got yeah. Ashanti Diadonis with Cedric, so I don't know why they'd bring him back. Exactly. I mean, it's not like, I mean, Hit Row, they didn't really do much anyway since they returned. So moving forward, Andrade approached Ray Ripley in the Judgment Day. Ripley said Dominic Mysterio wasn't here tonight, but he did speak highly of Andrade. We know that Ray wasn't, or Dom wasn't there because Dom is on his honeymoon. Dominic Mysterio got married last week. Did you see the video where he's tried to speak at his own wedding and they booed him? Yeah, I saw that. That was yeah. hilarious. Yeah, and uh, Priest and Theory were actually two of his groomsmen. Priest and uh, Theory? Yep. Priest and Austin I Theory. Mean, Priest makes sense. Priest makes sense, but I don't, know, I don't know how Austin Theory was. I mean, I guess they're really close in real life. Seems like it. I mean, when you think about it, Theory came up to the main roster right around the time Dom was starting, and so they've been around each other a lot in those last couple of years. <clears throat> Maybe they grew like a real friendship. You never know. I mean, they did, but then they, I think they had Theory go back down to NXT for a while. He might have, he was on I, think roster. He, I think he might have briefly, yeah. Because he went on main roster, team with uh, Angel Garza or Andrade with Zelina. With Zelina, then they they kicked him out of that. Then he became a disciple with Seth Rollins yep. for like about a month. And then after that, they did nothing with him. Then they eventually brought him back down in NXT to join the way. Uh, so they did a lot with him that year. That 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 was kind of weird, right? Like, I honestly thought when they signed Austin Theory, I thought it was going to be like a huge singles guy in NXT. Well, no. So, I mm -hmm. I can see where you would think that because it came off of a big run in Evolve. But I also thought the same thing about Josh Briggs. And now they're finally starting to push him on his own. But, no, they well, I, Josh Briggs had, had like a whole different gimmick, though. Well, Josh Briggs was great in Evolve. He was former Evolve champion and... He had long hair then, yeah, I, and yeah. I think he was the last ever Evolve champion, wasn't he? I think so. It was either him or Theory. I know. I think it was Josh Briggs. I think it he was. He was the last ever one. I'm looking it up right now. 
Evolved Championship. Last champion was, yeah, he beat Austin Theory in December of 2018, held the belt for a year. No. Theory won it in December of 2018. A year later, dropped it to Josh Briggs, and then Evolve closed operations about six months later, seven months later. So, yeah, he was the last Evolve champion, beating Austin Theory for the title. Well, yeah, he had, like, a whole different gimmick, though, when he was involved. He had, like, longer hair mm. and stuff. And then, then he cut his hair, and then, then he just looked more like a country guy. Yep. So. Which I'm sure that was probably all, like, Vince booking, though. No, that was NXT. Vince had nothing to do with any of that. Like, when 2.0, that's when he, he started doing more stuff. Kinda. I don't know. I just don't see. I see that more of a Shawn Michaels call to make them like like a country you know we live in the the country kind of like him the three like the three of them together him um fallon henley and i always forget the other guy's name why do i always forget the other guy? bull buchanan's son what was his name again brooks jensen brooks jensen i feel like that could have been a Shawn michaels call i don't i don't see that as a vince gimmick but wasn't like most of the 2.0 like creative stuff like vince and bruce pritchard i would say so I'm from what I I don't think so. Not most. I think they had a lot of say, but I don't think most, especially like stuff like this. Because I think these guys were already developing this before 2.0, doing all the house shows and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. This really sounds like a Shawn Michaels. I'm from Texas gimmick. Um, I don't know. It's it. A lot of people thought it was like 2.0 because when Triple H like finally came back, they immediately changed like 2.0 to like yeah, white and gold. Right when Triple H came back, mm. so that's why probably a lot of people thought like, oh, it was probably all Vince McMahon then. Moving forward, they showed video packages for Shinsuke Nakamura and Bronson Reed. They also show pictures of previous Intercontinental Champions, including. Chris Jericho. They even acknowledged I didn't Jericho. See that one. Yep. They acknowledged Jericho. I mean, you kind of have to show Jericho if I'm being completely honest. Let's see if I can find it. They showed Drew McIntyre and Kofi. The Drew McIntyre one was kind of shocking, unless you're trying to show like current wrestlers who held the title before. So watch, it's right here. So they were showing all the different champions, and they show Chris Jericho, Randy Orton, Miz, Roman Reigns, and then Gunther, and then they're like, gauntlet match tonight. Yeah, they showed Jericho. Old. I totally forgot Roman held the IC title. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I've kind of forgot about it. I, like, I remember back then, because... So when Roman won the title, that's when like Brock was Universal Champion. They were weren't really like Brock wasn't really on television, so they're trying to make the IC title like the new like yep. best thing. Exactly. So they're like, all right, we'll put it on Roman and try to make it relevant. Move forward. Damian Priest and R Truth in an eight minute match. Priest decked an unsuspecting truth with a right hand as he entered the ring. With his music still playing. It was so unexpected. Cole didn't even seem to notice at first. As he was in the middle of an ad read. Which is kind of weird. Must jump with Johnny Gargano. Energy cheer on Truth. Who avoided a razor's edge outside the ring. And followed this up with a running clothesline off the apron. Priest then hit Truth with a flatliner after a break for a two. Truth followed this up with John Cena comeback sequels. Including an AA for a near fall. Crowd actually thought Truth might win here. They then also cheered loudly as Truth put Priest in the STF. Truth let go upon seeing McDonough and Balor attack DIY. Truth then went to the top and took out everyone with a dive. However, it was one of those dives where he basically split the group of bodies and planted hard. He missed, like, he fell right between all these guys and kind of just splatted. Referee checked on him. They continued the match. South of heaven after a clothesline, and 
Priest gets the victory. Hopefully, Truth is okay because Eli he crashed down hard on the outside. Tyler and JD then completed laying out DIY, and we go from there. What'd you think? I mean, it was okay. It wasn't anything special. It was probably just something for Truth to do with the Judgment Day tonight. I think Truth is going to take a few more. Well, other than winning next week, I think. What I think is going to happen is Truth and Miz are going to qualify for the tag title match next week. And then they're probably going to get beat down again by Judgment Day. And I think they're going to keep getting beat down by Judgment Day till WrestleMania when they eventually win the tag titles. I think that's exactly what they're going to be doing. Yeah. Uh, since Saturday said they also showed Matt Cardona in the, in the IC oh, okay. video. I didn't see that one. I, I can't remember which part... They showed because I know they showed two different ones. Okay, so I only saw one of them then, because I only saw the one. Yeah, they definitely showed two other ones. Gotcha. Because they showed one with like past <laughs> champions, with like champions who are like retired, right? And they showed one with like people who are like currently in WWE hmm. that have held the, the belt. Moving forward, they talked about. Different people at the UFC event this past weekend at UFC 299. They showed Logan Paul and KSI there with Mr. Beast. And they also showed Rhea Ripley with her fiance, AEW's Buddy Matthews. So, yeah. Weirdly enough, they showed Rhea and Buddy together at the UFC show on Monday Night Raw. And it wasn't just like a quick little thing. Uh uh. Like, this photo got some time, which is very weird. So, well, did they really acknowledge that, like, he's Buddy Matthews? They just said Rhea Ripley was there as well. But then they, did you see the photo? Yeah, I saw the photo. Yeah. But they didn't, I don't think they really acknowledged, though, which that's the difference, though. Because then no, the people could they just didn't. be like, oh. They didn't, but it's still just weird that they showed the photo at all. Like, I was shocked that they showed it at all. I mean, I'm sure. WWE was cool with it as long as they didn't acknowledge that that's AEW star Buddy Matthews. Well, then that's my question. Is AEW going to be cool with it? Or are they going to be like, what the hell? Why are you showing our guy on your TV? Because for anybody that didn't see it. I'm sure they're cool with it, if I'm being completely honest with you. They showed this image. It said WWE at UFC. There's Buddy. There's Rhea. And it says Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley. And so if you want to take it literal, you can think that they're acknowledging him as part of WWE because it says WWE at UFC 299. Just saying. I mean, I feel like AEW would probably just be like, it's like, oh yeah, you're showing our guy on TV, but you didn't really acknowledge. They, I feel like the only reason why they would be upset is if they didn't acknowledge him as Buddy Matthews. Well, I don't think they really know. Mm. I don't think they would care, though. Yeah. But it's just weird that they used that photo. I granted, she posted it on her social media, but... I mean, maybe Rhea probably didn't expect WWE to use it, though. Oh, maybe. probably not. No, I doubt she expected them to show that picture on Raw. Like, I highly doubt she thought they were going to do that. But moving forward, Becky Lynch challenged Nia Jax to a last woman standing match for next week. And then we get the Jey Uso promo. This was really good. Like, this was... Jey was on on a, another level here. Like, when I said Cody was amazing in his promo, Jey was so good here as well. Jey comes out, of course, huge reaction from the crowd and Pat McAfee. Jey said that he's come to Raw for a fresh start, but the bloodline keeps not, uh, keeps not letting that happen. He said that Jimmy just won't let go of the past. Jay then says, how about brother versus brother, twin versus twin, blood versus blood, me versus me, Jay versus Jimmy. At WrestleMania, Jay told Jimmy to accept his challenge so he can knock the yeet out of his ass. Like, Jay was really good here. I really like this. Crowd was super behind it. And as we all expected... Uso versus Uso at WrestleMania. What'd you think of the segment? I mean, they kind of had to start it tonight, if I'm being completely honest. 
start tonight. Jimmy, I know Jay lays the challenge tonight, and then on Friday it'll probably just be Jimmy saying I accept. I loved how different this was than most promos we get in WWE. It was literally two and a half minutes of that, straight to the point, just, hey, you keep screwing with me. I tried to get away so I don't have to live that life no more. Now I'm going to end it at WrestleMania. Like, he just straight to the point, bang, 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 we're done. Accept my challenge, bruh. I wonder if they add like a stipulation to this match. What if they did like tribal combat or something? Or do you think it'll just be regular one on one? I think if they're going to have, so here's my thing. If Roman Cody is going to have any sort of like no DQ or have any sort of Jay or, or Jimmy can get involved, then I don't think this match has any of that. Because I think there's a chance of like, I think that Roman Cody match is going to be way overbooked. I'm just going to say it right now. I think there's going to be a, a a spot where Jimmy tries to get involved and Jay stops him or something. So, no, I think if there's I mean, going to be, do you really think do you really think they have Jay get involved with this? I don't think they do. I think they will. I think they. I, I think <sighs> it's. I think it's very very possible that if Jimmy tries to get involved, Jay tries to stop him. I don't, I don't know. Like I can see it, but at the same time, it's like they probably want Cody to beat beat all the odds by like just him, where they probably don't want anyone else getting involved. Yeah, but if The Rock is going to help him, as many are predicting, then what is all the other interference and help and whatnot going to matter? So, and, and it's just me thinking that they could and that, that they may overbook it, and that's what it would be. So, another question though. Do you think Rikishi gets involved in this at all? Do you think they call in Daddy? Nah. You think they call in Daddy Us? Nah, I don't think so. He tweeted about it. I can see him maybe being at ringside for this, or oh, I think he goes ringside for his son's match. What's what I'm talking about? Do you think he gets involved in Jimmy versus Jay? Yeah, I think he does. Because he sent out a tweet recently. Let me see if I can find it. I didn't know Rikishi had a podcast. He used to stream on Twitch for a little bit. Huh. I didn't know any of that. Um, yeah, because like... Oh, no, he didn't. Was like, what? Go for it. I know he used to stream on Twitch for a little bit, and Colt Cabana was like, wait, Rikishi's streaming on Twitch? Does this guy know what he's doing? That's funny. No, no, no. So he didn't tweet about it. I think he mentioned it on his podcast. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Then we get a Gunther video package hyping up him as the Intercontinental Champion. Then we go to the back where he's being interviewed by Jackie Redman. She said that some think that he's become overconfident and was underestimating tonight's contenders. Gunther didn't care if any of that, for any of that. He was focused on his legacy. He said he beat Ricochet 640 days ago to become the Intercontinental Champion and has elevated this title to a new level. He said the best way would be lay it all out and figure out who faces me in Mania so I could just beat him. He said it took a lot to be in his position and he wishes everybody... Good luck tonight. Basically, he's just like, I like beating people up, so any of them win, I'll fight any of them. Now my question for you, what do you think of Muhammad Ali going into the WWE Hall of Fame as they announced that next after it was announced this morning? I think it's cool. Probably, probably just like another celebrity yep. Hall of Famer. That's our one celebrity. I wonder who gets the Warrior Award, though, this year. I have no clue. Because they haven't announced that yet. Uh-uh. They've been announcing these Hall of Fame names pretty quickly. It's like every two to three days. I would assume... Yeah. Because they started late. They started pretty late, though, with the Hall of Famers. Actually not, though. Because if you look at last year when they first announced it, it was the first week of March. And they announced Heyman the first... The, they started announcing stuff last week, which was the first week of March. Well, it actually was a... Mm, ish. First week-ish. But yeah, 
Because if you think last year had what five, counting the Warrior Award, that they really only have the Warrior Award left if they just go if they just do the whole male female tag team celebrity Warrior Award. All they got left is Warrior Award. If you think about it, unless they're still trying to figure out who gets it this year, people are upset they haven't announced Bray yet. But I feel like if Bray's gonna go in, he should be the headliner, and Heyman's the headliner. They may be saving Bray for next year. Probably. And like, I know when Eddie passed away, they waited like a year later to induct him. Well, Eddie was the exact next year because Eddie died in 2017 or not 2017, 2006. 2005. Was it 2005? It was 2005. Then he got inducted in 2006. Yeah. So it was the next year. So that's why everyone thought, you know, Bray would go into the next year. For every reason, I always think Eddie died in 06. I don't know why. I always feel no, like he died the year. Because I always feel like he died the year before Benoit. Like, Benoit didn't even last another year before he passed away. I think that's why I always get that confused. But uh, Benoit was <clears throat> two years later. Yeah. So, they announced some stuff for next week. We already talked about all this, though, but I'll recap it really fast. Becky Lynch versus Nia Jax in the last woman standing match. We have three qualifying matches for the woman, WrestleMania 40 ladder match for the tag titles. New Day versus Otis and Kira Tozawa. DIY versus The Creed Brothers. And R-Truth and Miz against Indu Sure. They also told us in two weeks, CM Punk will be on Raw in Chicago. Do you think they're going to use CM Actually, Punk to further build Seth and Drew? I can see it. Have Punk come out or... So we know Punk's going to be on the show, so I wouldn't... Because, like, if... What would have been really cool is them being in Chicago. Drew talking crap about Punk, going, oh, we're here in Chicago, and no CM Punk. I bet you guys are upset. I wished and took... I helped injure him, da-da-da-da, and then Punk makes a surprise return on that night. That would be cool. If, like... Drew's talking crap and doesn't expect Punk, and then Punk just comes out. But also, it's not a bad idea to announce Punk now so you sell more tickets. Yeah. Uh, awesome Judah had, had a good question. Do they even do the Warrior Award because didn't Dana Warrior depart from WWE? True, but I still think they can do it. Because when did she... You know, I think she left about a year ago. Well, I was trying to see if it was before or after last year's Mania. Um, Dana Warrior. Da, 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 da. Last, yeah, last fall, she was laid off by WWE. This will be the first Warrior Award that she's not associated with the company if they do it. So I can probably see them maybe that go like, we're not going to do it since Dana's not here. Or maybe Dana says, don't do it if I'm not in WWE. I think they would still do it. It's not like she's got the rights to the Warrior Award or something. I highly doubt that. But. I oh, don't know. Moving forward, we got our main event. But wasn't, go for it. Wasn't she always the one that would always like present the Warrior Award? Yeah, well, they can find somebody else. She would come out and, like, well, yeah. I'm trying to think if she did it every year. I don't think she did it every year, though. I know she did the first one. Screw it. You know who can do it now? Titus yep. O'Neil. Have Titus be the one to present the, the Warrior Award. I mean, yeah, you could. Titus O'Neil. A former Warrior Award winner himself. He didn't get it last year. That was it. Was the no last year? Last WWE year was, that got it. Last year was Tim White. He got it two years ago. No, oh. he got it last year. Titus O'Neil. No, the Tim White. Yeah, Tim White. I'm saying Titus got it two years ago. Yeah, Titus got it. No. Uh, well. It wasn't two years ago. It was like three years ago, I think. I'm looking it up right now. I think two years ago was uh, Shad Gaspard. Oh, shit. Titus got it in 2020. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that far away. So who got it in 2021? 
don't think they had one in 2021. Let's oh, 2022 see. was Shad. Yeah. So they did. Twenty twenty. Okay, so Neil. It was a rich herring, I think. Yeah. Rich herring. He was a he was a long time WWE employee that got it. Never heard of him and I don't even remember that. But he was a uh, like WWE senior vice president of government relations and risk management. But the also the other thing though too is that's the year when they just combined the 2020 and 2021 inductions and no one watched it. Yeah. Well, that's probably why we don't remember. Cuz I think well, I think, no. Uh, WrestleMania 37. That's also why I'm thinking. Like, nope. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry to cut you off. I also know why I'm thinking two years ago because they did the 20 and 2021 inductions all together, not in 2020. Yeah. They didn't do the 2020 inductions. So that's where I got everything mixed up in my head. <clears throat> also, for some reason, Wikipedia yeah. doesn't have last year's listed. Last year's any Hall of Fame listed. That's weird. Because. Yeah, because WrestleMania 37, that's when they did, like, Night 1, 2020 inductions, and Night 2, 2021 inductions. Yeah. Well, I can't remember. I, I totally forgot that 2021, that Kane was the headliner. Right? Was he the head? Yeah, he was the headliner, huh? He was, yeah. So I was trying to think if it was, yeah, it was him. It was him, RVD, Eric Bischoff, Molly Holly, and Kali. And the Bellas. No, the Bellas were the year before. It might have been JBL. Um, I think JBL was 2021. JBL was 2020. Again, 2020 and 2021 all mashed together because they didn't do, because they did inductions all together for those. Because they didn't do an induction ceremony in 2020. And then in 2021, they did the inductions together. And then Batista said, I'm not doing it without a crowd. And yeah. Uh, 2021, it was Kane, RVD, Molly Holly, Eric Bischoff, and Great Kali. Yeah, that was right. Then 2020, I think it was, uh, the NWO, the Bellas, Bellas Twins, JBL, British Bulldog, and Liger. Oz, Ozzy Osbourne. And the Liger went in in 2020 as well. He was the same class as JBL. So as far as our main event does go. We had the gauntlet match. The number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. Match started off with Ricochet and JD McDonough. And I'm like, all right, it's going to go like five, six minutes. And then JD's going to get pinned and whatever. No. This went way longer. I didn't get times on the individual matches. I just have overall. The whole thing overall went 41 minutes. But Ricochet and JD was way better than it had any right to be. Way better than I expected it to be. And I think this was a main roster coming out party for JD McDonough. JD McDonough showed us, oh, you can go out there and have a hell of a match. And him and Ricochet killed it. Ricochet tried to fly in crossbody early, but McDonough caught him in midair with a gut buster. Ricochet tried to come back minutes later, but McDonough got his knees up on a lion salt attempt. McDonough then followed us up with the brain buster for a two. Ricochet fired back and hit a poison Rana on McDonough, but McDonough then followed it up with a Spanish fly for a two. Ricochet then hit a Death Valley driver onto the apron following a commercial break. McDonough slid into the ring to break the 10 count, but Ricochet hit him with a lion salt. Ricochet followed this up with the Northern Lights suplex and a float over into a vertical suplex for a two. McDonough would then rake the eyes of Ricochet and chucked him into the ring post for a two. Ricochet then shoved McDonough off the top rope, hit a shooting star press, and pinned him for the first elimination of the night. And like I said, these two were fresh. These two went out there and they said, we're going to show you guys what's up. And they showed us what's up. The next up was Bronson Reed. This Willie didn't go long at all. Bronson Reed defeating Ricochet. Ricochet took the fight to Bronson Reed and instantly attacked him with consecutive dives. Ricochet tried something fancy, but Reed just smashed him, hit a senton, hit a tsunami, and pinned him to eliminate Ricochet. Out next would come Sami Zayn. Zayn hit a moonsault off the barricade, which led to a break but Reed was in control after the break. 
Reed had Zane on his shoulders while standing on the middle rope, but Zane slipped out and hit a Sunset Flip Powerbomb for an elim a pinfall elimination. Uh, Nakamura then entered next. Reed decked Zane from behind and hit him with a tsunami before Nakamura even got into the ring. Nakamura tried to take advantage of this and went for a Kinsasha, but Zane countered into a cradle for a two. Nakamura used kits, kicks to take over and kicked Zane over the announce table. Nakamura was in control after a break, but Zane hit a blue thunderbomb for a two. Nakamura went for something off the ropes, but Zane ducked and immediately hit a haluva kick and got the elimination. Before we get to the Chad Gable match, what did you think of the other four matches? I mean, I thought the other four were pretty solid. I mean, Bronson and Ricochet went pretty quick, but JD McDonough versus Ricochet went pretty good for, considering for the first one. Yeah. Like, I honestly thought that the first one could have been like Shinsuke versus Ricochet. Where like Ricochet would pick up the victory in like in a roll, roll up pin, and then Shinsuke would like beat the crap out of him, and then Bronson Reed would get like a quick victory, or JD gets a quick victory. Right. Yeah, I could I could have saw that. Because like, no, that's what they could have done. They could have had like Ricochet did like a roll up pin on Shinsuke. Uh -huh. Shinsuke like beats up Ricochet. JD comes out and does like a quick victory on Ricochet, and then. And they do like JD McDonough versus Bronson Reed, where Bronson Reed wins. I wouldn't hate that. And they could have done like a small like Ricochet versus Shinsuke rivalry. Yeah, because then I also would have played in good with JD being a heel and like stealing a, a pinfall here. Like he didn't earn it, he didn't deserve it, but he got it anyways. So that would have been right. a nice way to do that. But then, then we got Sami Zayn. Chad Gable, and oh my God, was this awesome. These two worked so well together. This was so great. They had so much emotion, so much just, oh, Jesus freaking Christ. Give me one of these matches, just the two of them, fresh off the boat. Here we go. So Zane was down as uh, Gable entered, but Gable stopped himself from taking the advantage. He waited for Zane to get up, even helping him to his feet, saying, I ain't going to just pounce. I'm going to wait for you to be ready. Zane fired up, and they went at it. Gable immediately hit some, some German suplexes. Gable applied an ankle lock outside the ring, but Zane kicked him into the steel steps, and sold. And uh, Gable sold it like he was dead. After commercial break, Gable hit an exploder suplex off the top for a two. Gable then went for a moonsault, but Zane got his knees up and caught him in a roll-up for a two. Gable then hit some forearm strikes and a slap, so Zane slapped him back. They traded slaps and forearms until Zane booted Gable. Gable reversed a blue thunder bomb into an ankle lock, but Zane got the rope break. Zane blocked the chaos theory attempt into an exploder. He limped because they're playing up the bad ankle, but still hit a haluva kick, and Gable was able to avoid the kick and apply the ankle lock yet again. Zane couldn't get to the ropes and almost played it up like he was about to tap. Gable then pulled him to the middle of the ring. Zane tried to kick him off of it, and Gable would not let go of that ankle lock. He held on, flipped around, stood back up, and still had it on. Zane tried to get to his feet, and Gable said, screw the ankle lock, and he hit him with another German suplex, where Sammy landed like right on the side of his head and neck and shoulder. That looked like hurt. Gable then went for a moonsault, but Zane dodged and hit a haluva kick while still limping, playing up the injured ankle. Zane then took a little too long to go for the cover, which allowed Gable to reverse the cover into a crucifix. We all thought that was it. One, two, no. I thought when he reversed that pin into the crucifix, I thought Gable was winning. Nope, Sammy kicks out. Gable then says, huh, time to kick it up a notch, and he pulls the straps down. He bridges his ermine, but he only gets a two off of it. As soon as Zane kicks out, Gable applies another ankle lock, but Zane reverses it into a cradle. One, two, three. Zayn wins and will face Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. The referee raises his hand. He can't get to his feet, so Gable helps him. Gunther then comes out and just stares down both of them, really, at Wrestle or um, ahead of the match at WrestleMania. But here's the thing. I'm going to pull this up from Twitter. Apparently, Gable's shoulders weren't down. So while I find that, what did you think of the match itself? Yeah, this was pretty good. I like the beginning part where Gable's like, like, get up. I don't want to win this way. Yeah. Like, like, oh boy, they're going to put on a show here. 
So let me see if I can find it. Because here it is. So basically, Gable's shoulders. Let's pull this up on the screen. We're not fully down through the whole three count. They have this here. And you see one. Oh, it's only sh shows from the one, from the three. But if you look right there, technically his shoulders aren't down on the mat. And then he kicks out, of course. But so now everyone's tweeting on Twitter. Oh, are we getting a triple threat? Are we getting a triple threat? I hope not. We got a triple threat last year. We don't need another triple threat for the IC title. Well, and also, like, Gunther needs to have a singles match at Mania. Yes. Considering, like, what he's done with the IC title. Like, he needs to have a singles match. Right. But, yeah, everyone's now saying, oh, Chad Gable's shoulders run down. That's going to play into something. Da, 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 this and that. And da, da, da. I'm like, eh, no. Because if you think about it, Gable's story has been he wants to beat Gunther for revenge on his family as far as making his daughter cry. When he had that face-to-face -face with Gunther last week, he did not state, I want to beat you for the belt. He said, I just want to beat you. Also think about this. The original plan was Brock Lesnar. So it's not like there was ever a plan for Gable to win the title of WrestleMania anyways. No, they went from Brock to now Sammy. So we'll see where it all does lead to, but Gable has been saying, I want to beat you. He hasn't said, I want to take the title from you. He says, I just need to beat you because you made my daughter cry. Again, he did not state, I need to take the title off of you. And this has been like three weeks now where he said, I, want, I need to beat Gunther. So I think Sammy wins at WrestleMania. And then after Mania, you can have Chad Gable beat Gunther just straight up. No belt on the line. What do you think? I mean, does... Does Sammy actually beat Gunther? Because I don't think so. I do. I mean, it would be cool, but like, does Sammy really need it though? Why not? Well, I mean, because I feel like whoever beats Gunther, I feel like it should be someone like younger who's like coming up to the rise, basically. Well, that still wouldn't be Chad Gable then. I mean,. <laughs> It still could be Chad Gable because Chad Gable really hasn't done much as a singles guy. So they played up pretty big that Chad Gable was the only person in this actual gauntlet match that has not won a singles championship in WWE or NXT. So that's why I was like, oh, they really played up Gable going to win? But yeah. Someone in the Twitch chat said the fans are trying to get We Want Gable over on social media. Oh, yeah, no, the triple threat is trending as well. Like, we got a triple threat last year. Come on. Exactly. We don't need another one. They're not going to do another one. Because if, I if think they... Fans are, I think fans... So my whole thing is if they even think, acknowledge that his shoulders were not down, all they got to say is referee's call is final. We go off what the referee says. I think fans keep trolling over the we want this person trend. Oh, yeah, no, because it, be totally it, it worked with Cody. And then like the last week or the week before, they were doing the we want Liv coming out of Elimination Chamber. Screw that. Screw that. I like Liv, but no. The only reason it worked for Cody is because the Cody story got changed so many times. Because if, if you guys want a history lesson of what we have learned over the last month on what was supposed to happen... Back in November, Cody Rhodes was told, you're facing Roman Reigns for sure at WrestleMania. It is you and Roman for the title of WrestleMania. He was told that in November. Then come January, The Rock comes back. The Rock, well, actually, come um, November as well, Punk comes back, and they already know they're going to do Punk and Seth at WrestleMania. So that's set in stone. And as of the end of 2023, it was supposed to be Roman and Cody, Seth, and Punk. So then we go to January. January 1st, Rock shows up and says, I want to, basically says, I want to fight Roman. He says, head of the table. January 3rd is when plans got changed. And they started placing things in line for, okay, we're actually going to do 
Rock, Roman, WrestleMania, how do we get there? All in all, Cody's still being told, you're winning the Royal Rumble. The plan was for Cody to win the Rumble and get the match with Roman. Punk would then lose the Rumble to Cody and go on to win the Elimination Chamber to get the match with Seth. What they were going to do in the original plan was Cody is going to get this super bad injury in storyline and Cody was going to be the one to bring in The Rock to take his place against Roman. Then instead, Punk got injured. They then shifted to, okay, so we're still wanting to do Rock and Roman. How do we get Cody to Seth? Oh, we still say Cody's going to, we say Cody's going to pick Seth instead. Then they did the We Want Cody stuff over the weekend. Rock said, you know what? Never mind. Let's shift the plans. I'll play the heel. We'll do this, that, and whatever. They then shift to Drew winning the chamber and getting the match against Seth, and that's where we're at now. But that is why things changed, and that's why they it worked. That's why the We Want Cody worked is because all this time, it was always originally supposed to be Cody. Everyone's saying, we want Liv. We want Gable. Why? Nothing was ever actually taken from them that they were promised. Liv was never told, you're going to fight Rhea for the title at WrestleMania, and then they took it from her to give it to Becky. No one, or Gable was never told, you're going to fight Gunther at WrestleMania, and then they took it to give it to Sammy. No. Gunther was originally supposed to fight Brock. So, doing the, we want Gable, we want Liv, and whatever else you're going to, we want, ain't going to get you what you want. Because it's not something that was changed from the original plan. So, yeah. But with that, you know what we thought of the show? We, now it's time to hear what you guys thought of tonight's show. The Twitch poll is live. Let me refresh all the other polls as well. As we look here, let's get the Twitter poll up as well. As far as the threads poll does go, 45% thought the show was just all right. 27% liked it, and 27% didn't like it. Looking at the Twitter poll, 73% liked the show, 13% thought it was just all right, and 13% didn't like it. As far as the YouTube community poll does go, 76% liked the show, 20% thought it was just all right, and 4% didn't like it. Some of the comments here says, 9 out of 10, this one says, Sammy and Gable with a match of the year contender. I wouldn't go that far. I would think that their match was good. But I, I could not, I can, no. You can't give that match of the year in the vacuum of if it's in another, no. Now, if they were to try and do a similar match, no. I, I just can't give that match of the year contender at all. I can't even put that up for consideration. Um, of course it says, okay, that's weird. Candice the Rain moment was out of nowhere. Not fully because they teased us last week. Versus our truth should have won. No, we shouldn't if they're winning the tag titles at Mania. And this person said, really? This person don't know that it's fake. Versus Nia should be fired from WWE. She's always attacking everybody for no reason. Oh shit, that's her gimmick. I mean, she's a bully. I mean, I mean, this that's basically someone who thinks this is all real. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And then as far as the YouTube live poll does go, 79% liked the show. 14% thought it was just all right. And 7% didn't like it. Finally, the Twitch poll, everybody that voted liked the show. What that guys want to say, thank you for joining us here. Twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. YouTube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited. And podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. Luke, tell them where they can find you. You can find me over at Twitter X at Petkin underscore 21. And you can also find me over at Twitch at Young Grasshopper Luke. With that, guys, have a great rest of your night. Have a great rest of your week. We'll be back on Wednesday for AEW Dynamite, the big business edition of AEW Dynamite from Boston. That's supposed to be a big show. So with that, have a great rest of your night and week, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys.